Happy Monday, Therapy Flow. Welcome back. What's going on, guys? Welcome in. Hey, we're here to answer uh, some more questions for our weekly Q&A. Uh, and we're going to be diving into some of the nuances of marketing. Uh, specifically, we're just going to hop right in with a question about uh, Google Ads versus uh, like Facebook and Instagram ads, which are better, which should kind of dictate your starting process. We have a lot of content on both, but we're gonna just real quick do kind of compare analysis, contrast, what are the pros and cons of, of those two big buckets, and then maybe anything else. Um, let's dive in. Yeah, I'll maybe start with like the cons for both of them. So the, the cons for both is guys, it's, ads and you're spending money in some capacity, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think the cons for Google ads, you need to have a website um, and you need to have a website that can effectively move someone from a site visitor to someone who's contacting you and reaching out. Uh, so if your site is maybe less tested on that front, you might have a harder time. I think the, uh, the other cons for Google ads might be they tend to cost uh, a considerable bit more and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting better quality contacts um it just means that they were searching for something uh, i think if we keep in mind people don't read uh people <laughs> tend to scan people try to make a quick decision we're seeing average site times dropping we're not seeing average time on site increasing and so uh, attention spans are still short and uh, it's really hard to educate people really quickly. So I think that's a, a con for Google ads is they're a little bit more expensive and it doesn't necessarily mean that there's more, um, more like sales potential yeah. there. Uh, yeah. I think the, the long-term con for Google ads as well is the, um, the deeper you go into Google ads, I feel like the more technical they become. Just mm -hmm. in my experience and watching lots of practice owners go through this, I'd say the initial barrier to entry, we're talking about like starting out and getting your first ad campaign up and running, either through Facebook and Instagram and or through Google. I'd say both of those are about the same difficulty, but then once the campaign is up and running, and especially if things don't go the way we want and need them to, I think just the variables in Google ads, the technical skill in Google ads, just the long-term shelf life, you just need a more skilled person in the therapy space, or you're going to have to spend more time acquiring technical knowledge rather than general knowledge. And I think that's in some ways a, a potential pro or potential con to, con to Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, images your copy and your offer drive the results of the Facebook ads a lot more and sometimes not as much your technical skill, at least for service ads. There are other types of ads out there, e-commerce and other things, you know, that a therapy practice won't deal with that this doesn't remain true for, but just generating like inquiries or leads through Facebook ads. I just think the long-term technical skill, it's less of a, of a science you have to figure out and more of an art that you have to get good at. And so if we had to like ratio it out, maybe Google ads is like 40% art, 60% technical, and Facebook ads is the is the reverse of like 60% art and only 40% technical. So it's some ways choosing your battles, but we see practices getting great results with both all the time. Yeah, I think the another, a con for maybe Facebook and Instagram ads here is um, you're generating like, cold contacts. Um, and we hear this all the time. And I think it's because so many therapists are expecting like highly emotionally invested individuals to respond to their advertisements. Um, but that's just not the case for Facebook and Instagram advertisement. These are cold people, right? And so yeah. they don't like become a person until you actually make contact with them. And so there's angles that you sort of have to figure out like internally your own mindset and like emotionally, what can you handle? Um, and like, what do your processes look like to kind of maybe protect some of your energy on some of those cases? I'd say that that's probably the major con for Facebook ads. And I think Facebook ads force you, uh, we'll, we'll call it a con, but it's also kind of, it's a double edged, it's uh, a pro and a con, but it really does force you to take this more like artistic route. You have to be maybe a little bit more creative. You have to figure out how to get attention. You can't just rely on people coming to you. Um, it's, it, it does require a little bit more creativity. And, sure. uh, and I'd also say that it requires a little bit more uh, media, like creation. And so yeah. all all interesting cons to have, 
Um, I guess we can maybe go down some of the pros too. I don't know if that's helpful. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, in, in some ways with, with just comparing which of these platforms are better, uh, I think, let's say you've already invested a ton of time, money, and energy in getting a website that converts. What I mean by it is you are consistently getting a trackable, measurable amount of new inquiries from your current therapy website. That's a great indication that Google Ads might work really well for you with just some good budget and some good build out of a campaign and it work needing to be done in the campaign, maybe more so than your site, if that's what's happening organically for you already. So in some of the, in a good way, if you have a really great website, adding Google ads into it can kind of build off of tons of time and money that you've already invested into your practice. So huge pro there. And it will then as a result, mimic the experience that you're currently getting from someone contacting you through, through psychology today or referral. They'll be a little bit warmer is what I'm saying as they reach out to you because they'll probably have consumed some content on your website and other things. But likewise, if you're someone that's investing into social media, if you're someone that's investing heavily into the aesthetic of your process, if you're someone that wants to build other products and services, even beyond your one-to-one -one therapy, I'm talking books or courses or online coaching or some of those things, the road to that through like Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok ads and other things um, is a lot clearer to see success through there than it is through like Google ads through your traditional therapy website. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that Facebook and Instagram and those other social platforms, many of them don't require that you have a website that's built. And so uh, it's really easy to just get started. Most of them have like in, uh, in uh, system sort of forms or other ways for people to get in contact with you. And so uh, if you're looking for quickness, easy uh, starting, like an easy diving point, uh, I'll take this minute to maybe recognize really quick that both can work. And so just choose like, what are the pains and problems that you want to have to figure out before you get something that's working. And so social ads usually are really, really like one, two, three. Um, if you just have a good process for those, they're really quick, lower cost, like lower barrier to entry, I'd say. Yeah. Um, another really interesting pro for Google ads, I'd say is that um, Google, you get to choose specifically the people who are maybe like possibly in market. And so on Facebook, you're not getting necessarily in market people. You're getting people who maybe resonated emotionally with something that you've got. Um, whereas Google, if, if someone's looking for a therapist near them, there's a good chance that if you pop up, they click your thing and they submit the form that you just need to get a hold of them and something is probably going to work out. Right. Um, and so I'd say in a lot of ways, that's maybe a big pro for Google. I think the final pro that I'd have for social advertising is you get to market to way more people. So yeah. where Google, you are only marketing to people who are typing in your keywords, uh, Facebook and Instagram and some of these other social platforms, you're, you have the ability to advertise to anyone and everyone, whether they are looking for therapy or not. And yeah. some of you might be like, I don't know if that's a good idea. But some of you find that there's a really good solid opportunity in there because there's a lot of people who are maybe procrastinating or, um, you know, maybe they're not educated on their options or they've been, you know, way weighing in on should they take the jump, but they're not necessarily searching for it. And so it could be a pro, could be a con, but for those of you who see it as a pro, uh, there's, there's certainly some space in there yeah. for that. And I'll just use a quick analogy for both of these platforms. I say that Facebook ads are kind of like a tourist track spot, meaning when you ex exist um, in a touristy town and you have a shop that's on the street corner there, there are people that specifically see it, need the service, seek you out, enter the store, buy the thing and complete a, a pretty straightforward cycle. But there's a lot of volume of traffic, a lot of volume of leads, a lot of clicks, you know, whatever you want to measure by people entering the store that are just window shoppers is, is the equivalent. Or there's just a large volume coming in and out because there's already so much traffic there, right? Someone, the way that Facebook works or Instagram is you're scrolling through your feed and the ad is there whether you want it or not. 
versus on the flip side is you have to go off the beaten path. You have to specifically seek out the search term to go into Google and say, hey, therapist near me. It is a different process, right? That is a very much, you know, one to one almost experience that someone is having for the ad with intent, with action, some of those things. They're not accidentally getting that search term. They're not searching for puppies and getting a therapy ad. They'd be getting puppy ads, right? And so there, there are pros and cons to both volume versus you know straightforwardness and one is noisier than the other so i think sometimes what happens a lot of times we see facebook ads being really successful for therapists and even cheaper if you can get past sort of the foot traffic feeling of like oh my gosh so many people are coming into the store why is no one buying it well people are buying but in comparison right if you have 500 people into the store only five people purchase it's because the it's a good way type of people that you're showing up it's just an approach and we can get better and long term there's strategies for keeping the same volume of traffic and converting more of those from five to ten to twenty to thirty right and a lot of practice owners don't give it enough time for the strategy of volume to play out through that platform yeah and and a good analogy we start more of our practice owners on Facebook and Instagram ads than we do on Google ads. So if that answers your qu the question in any way, shape or form, um, there's great reasons for both, but more of our practice are starting on Facebook and Instagram ads. Uh, let's bump up to Amber. Who's asking us, what is the best way to drive people to your link in bio? So essentially you are creating social content and you're asking people to go to your link in bio in order to access. The number one way to drive someone to your link in bio is to have something valuable in your link in bio and reference it specifically and probably for free. And I see a couple of big strategies that work for this. Number one is you have the rest of the training, the rest of a post, the rest of a blog, the rest of the fill in the blank content. So you have a one minute video, a three minute video, a 10 minute video, right? Hey, visit the link in bio for the full article for the full 45 minute training and for the rest 10 minute video, whatever it is, right? You, you either have it be a step further or the rest of the information and that call to action. Hey, you know, here are my top 10 tips. I only have time to give you the first three. If you want, you know, the, my other seven and number 10, which is probably my best one on the list, visit my link in bio, right? Blunt call to action with a really direct reason. You got value from me. There's even more value on the other side of this link in bio. Um, that would be my number one suggestion. Thoughts, Antilio? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll echo it and then maybe add. If you want traffic anywhere and you're looking for the best, I think we need to get really clear on what the best means. So like, are we talking about the cheapest? Are we talking about like, what are we talking about? And so maybe get really, really clear on that. And then finally, I might just, I might just push that a little bit further and just say, where are your clients? Where are your potential clients? Where are the people who would be interested in clicking on that? And then go there. So if you're creating content, if, if they, if they're in social, create content, right? If they're in a place where you can't access unless you can pay for it, then pay for it. If like, what, what does the situation look like? Because there's a million ways to like drive traffic somewhere. There's a million ways to get people to kind of do something obviously make something really valuable is going to be the like a, a, a like a top tier way to do it but then beyond that how are you getting eyeballs how are you channeling those eyeballs in an effective way and it's going to come back to what are you comfortable with doing what are you comfortable with doing consistently what are you comfortable with doing consistently and really well and then what are you comfortable with uh, like learning and improving on over time yeah. and when you ask less people will show up more when you do ask that would be my last suggestion here is if on every single post on every single video on every single thing you're withholding value and or putting in a call to actions like sign up with me visit my link in bio like whatever you're asking them to do in that link in bio the likelihood of them visiting it goes down less and less and less and so you know a really good ratio is like one or two asks one or two go visit my link in bio for like every 30 pieces of content that you post yeah people are naturally curious especially if you're putting out stuff that's interesting and helpful yeah yes yeah um 
What else? Uh, Ashley asks us, what are the best ways to market a telehealth only practice? Um, oddly enough, a lot similar to uh, the in-person places. So in-person, I, I think I might just give you the, the inverse here. <laughs> the inverse might be in person, you you maybe want to stick to like more local items, right? So this is going to be like Google My Business. This is going to be maybe like more networking, like in person networking. This is going to be like Chamber of Commerce type situations. I could see that, or even like local employers um, that may have like EAP type programs. So like local things, right? Things that you're like maybe boots on the ground could possibly do. Um, this does not disclude ads. This does not disclude any of those other things. But I, I'd say like, hey, if if you're looking at local, that's maybe what you would do. And so telehealth, you can do all that. Uh, but then you can also say, hey, what are some of the things that maybe don't require my boots on the ground or me meeting people? And how can I include that inside of my marketing and advertising strategy? And how can we keep things just simple enough that we can find some good success? Um, I think I think if you're asking this question, you might be trying trying to overcomplicate it. Uh, so don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> really, you just need yeah. to get traffic to yourself, um, whether that's ads, that's psychology today, or otherwise. Um, and you don't have maybe some of the restrictions that an in-person only practice might have. I don't think I have much to add there other than to hit on the don't overcomplicate it apart again, meaning uh, we have practices that are group and solos that are telehealth and single inside of our program uh, and in person, sorry. And we don't ever actually talk about the differences or the nuances. Like we never parse out the conversation between those two groups on a different strategy or another. Because the other thing is, is all of the in-person strategies, the networking, the flyering, the in-person events, whatever it is, are just accessible to you because that's where you live and you just happen to be asking people to show up to a brick and mortar practice. So meaning you could still network in person, you could still fly your coffee shops, you could still work with your local, uh, local to you, doctors and hospitals and everything else, churches, and just see clients telehealth, right? And all of the other strategies that are digital marketing strategy work just as well, if sometimes not better for telehealth only practices, right? When I, we can run an ad to an entire state rather than in the rural town of Nebraska, right? We had, we had a client come to us and they were like, hey, I can't get any clients. Well, their town was 300 people. She was already doing most of her sessions virtually, right? We turned on an ad, two weeks later, she was filled up because she marketed the thing to the entire state, right? So, so there are times, again, strategies overall don't change um, and it's just, how we need clients to see us and how we fulfill our service. Yeah. Uh, last question that we're gonna hit on today. Uh, Mary asks us, what would be step one for promoting a new counseling business? Announce that you have a new counseling business. <laughs> I'd say like, first things first, if people don't know you exist, you don't exist. Uh, so if you're not an option, then you're never an option. And so market yourself. So get, get in some of the places and announce that you have a new practice. I think that's one of the biggest advantages that new practices have that they don't use. They're so afraid of being the new practice on the block that they don't announce that they have a new practice. And it's crazy. The, the, the sales psychology behind something new, something different um, is tried and true. And so use the fact that you are new, be authentic, like, be there for yourselves um, and, and just present what you have because the truth is that new is better in a lot of cases. And some people, when they see new, they see new opportunities, new availability. They see maybe immediate openings. They see a lot there. So don't be afraid to be new. Don't be afraid to be the new person on the block and don't be afraid to act like the new practice. Hey, I've got a new practice. I have immediate availabilities. There, there's plenty of pros to working with a new practice. Right? You are not new. You have thousands of hours of experience and all these other things that you've got working for you, but you've got a new practice. It's new management. It's a new opportunity for someone who may be stuck in a situation that is same old. Maybe they're craving something new. Yeah. So don't be afraid to leverage that. Get eyeballs on yourself and uh, be loud and proud that you are starting would be my, my advice. I think to put just one step further of action that you can take on that is 
almost anywhere you Google, video you watch, content inside this group or other people's groups are gonna loosely give the same major categories for marketing your practice. And the thing that separates the people that have a full practice and the ones that don't have a full practice are the ones that number one, actually push into all of those places. They actually get on, do and promote their new practice to those different venues. And number two, is they figure out what level of quality is needed in each one of those platforms. And they work on each one, one at a time. So your first step is to say, hey, do I want to do listing sites first? Do I want to do a website first? Do I want to do paid ads first? Do I want to do in-person networking first? What is the first big way you do want to market your practice? Because there's no one right answer, but the answer is a complete follow through of a single step. And, and knowing that is actually step one. Oh, I have to see this strategy through from start to finish. Now I switch halfway through, right? Building the pie, putting the pie in the oven and either taking it out too soon or never putting it into the begin with means you never get a baked pie to eat. Right. And that's what we see all the time with marketing of the practice, uh, a half built website, a website that doesn't actually have the content in it. That's needed a, uh, lapsadaisical listing site strategy approach, um, Facebook ads that were run for a day or a week instead of a couple months, whatever it is. So learn what it takes in your certain area that you are choosing first and actually commit to it till you start to see the results. Love it. I couldn't add any more there if we tried. Guys, best of luck. Be a great practice owner today, as I know you guys are striving to be.